Wednesday Good Vlog Konnichiwa! My name is Senpai777 and welcome to a brand new thing that we're doing. Yeah, it's a thing. It is called Wednesday Book Vlogs. Shout out to Mama Senpai. She doesn't have a channel, but she came out with the awesome title for this video series that we're gonna do. So what this will be about um, is every Wednesday I will be doing it's, uh, it's not exactly a vlog, it's kind of like talking about five books, or five novels, or five book series that I like, and trust me, I got a lot. <laughs> so, this can be like an ongoing thing, you guys can leave a comment in the description below of what you think, um, if you'd like to see more, you know, just give me some good some good or bad feedback, you know, um, that'd be great. So, uh, the first one we got here is Frostworth Fools of the Beyond. Now, this is not the first book in the series, but I will say it is by far my favorite because it is about this wolf who had like a, a deformity on his paw and the wolf tribe kicked him out because they thought it made him weak and not to give away too much of a plot but it pretty much makes him like more stronger that he has that kind of deformation in his paw and it the plot really is really good and it's got it doesn't have like pictures it just has like sketches when the plot is like really um, racy, so it's like, uh, that. It's really awesome drawings, I really love this book. Next one is, of course, if you've been following my Twitter, you already know, The Vampire Diaries. Now, you might be thinking, ew, vampire love story. No. The books basically are pretty long. Um, and it's about this girl in high school who encounters these vampires after getting into a, a wreck. Um, I won't go into too much in case you want to read the book series. And basically she's in like a, uh, I wouldn't say love triangle, I'd say power struggle between two vampires who are not your typical twilight vampires they are actually really really, really bad um one has got an addiction the other is just like who cares <laughs> but the plot really thickens they go through like a lot of stuff there's a whole bunch of supernatural stuff involved there's the Vampires, there's the werewolves, there's the witches, the warlocks, uh, demons. It it really thickens the plot. I really love the TV series that they did for this, um, but I feel like uh, the last book they I guess maybe they didn't have enough funding for it, but they kind of didn't really follow the plot. I don't think it was even the last book, I believe it was like a book and a half, where the TV show kind of spun off to somewhere else and ended it differently from the way the book ended. Uh, personally, I love the TV show more than the books, and that's funny because, you know, I love books, but the books, when it comes to the end of the story, I like books more because the story is a lot better. So yeah, give that a check out. Next one is Ah Nostalgia. Artemis Fowl. Now uh, you might not be familiar with this series, but it's basically it's harmless, let me just say. It's about uh, a kid, like small kid who is a boy genius and instead of using his boy genius smarts for good he gets in a whole bunch of trouble 
but there's a twist. Um, he kidnaps a fairy, and it just escalates from there. Um, and he has nefarious plots to destroy the universe. Um, you might be wondering, oh, why do you like this series? Well, for one, the the lore in this book series, even though it's so small, the series steadily goes grows more and more in detail, more and more in plot. They add more and more elements. It's like a little bit like Lord of the Rings, but like milder tones and less info, if you know what I mean. But the plot does not suffer at all, and and you have like like these little Easter eggs on the bottom there that the author challenged all his readers to try to figure out what the secret message was. I haven't figured it out yet. I figured Google would be cheating it, but um. Yeah, it's a really awesome book series. I mean, this is just the first book. Um, the later books are a lot thicker. I believe the last book was about 400 pages. Um, and yeah, it goes into some crazy stuff. And it he's basically a mad kid genius who gets forced into the role of a hero even though he doesn't want to be. But it's a really awesome series. Alright, next one. This one is not a series. It is called The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Um, you might have heard about this book quite a few times. Um, it's not your typical pick-me-up book, start reading. It's got a lot of, you know, metaphors, and kind of poetic kind of passages. It's not exactly a poem, but I would consider it a literature novel. But the story behind it is really well written. Um, I think this is a really underrated book. It's about this guy who has everything he could ever want except riches. And he starts out as just a kid who hangs out with this painter, and this is painter is really, really good at painting. He creates masterpieces, and he's well known throughout the land, throughout the world. And Dorian would always watch him paint these beautiful, beautiful paintings. And so one day. Uh, the painter looks at Dorian and says, Your beauty, whatever, is so great that I would make you into a masterpiece. And he basically hints at, like, immortality, but he doesn't say it. It's kind of like a teaser. Like, he's not meaning it literally. So he paints some, and what happens is his, I guess his soul was put into the painting, and when the painting was finished, um, Dorian retained his beauty, he retained all his looks, he retained mortali immortality, he could never die, never get hurt, if he did get hurt, he would heal immediately, all that stuff. And then that brought him fame, riches, fortune, he got everything you could ever want and throughout his life not only was it a blessing for him it would turned into a curse because whatever evil deed he did would reflect on his personality but the twist was whatever good deed he did was not reflected on his picture it was reflected towards Dorian himself so it was kind of like a balance between him doing the beast bad things and his picture would change into this hideous thing. Um, I won't give too many details away. And it does not end well. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not a feel good book, but it has really epic grip. And the ending is basically a tragedy, but 
I mean, if you look past that, you can see what the book is trying to say, and I wouldn't say it's a lesson, I'd say it would, it would be more explained of a uh, poetic, uh, what's word? Uh, yeah, that word, I'll just put it there. Alright, and the last one. Now, I like a lot of books. I read millions, I would say millions, millions, millions of books, but I will forever say this book series is my absolute favorite. It is the Mortal Instrument series, and this is the fourth book? There's so many books in the series. There's like, I think she's making like, she's made like four series now? Yeah, that's a lot of books, but this is my favorite book cover of all time. It is called The City of Angels, and it is basically about these um, uh, demi-angel mortal people who go out and kill demons to protect the human race and the human race, or the mundanes as they put it in the book, doesn't know anything about the supernatural, doesn't know anything about demons, doesn't know that some of the demons will go out and eat them, or suck their soul out, or anything. And what they do is they go out, put their life on the line, and they kill the demons. But not only that, they also have the underworld, where the vampires, the werewolves, the sprites, the fairies, not the fairies, you know, cute little things, but like the feral ones where they have teeth and they're really scary. The fairies and warlocks and whatnot, and they all keep them in line, make sure that they're behaving and all that. And it's basically about this girl who, for some apparent reason, she has the sight where she can, you know, see them, and it goes on to a great adventure where it involves demons, warlocks, vampires, you name it, they have it, um, angels are involved too, I don't think they involve angels until, what, um, book three or book four, but yeah, they're involved, angels, the stuff is sprout through the whole thing, you have demon mythology and all that. And they're just like an elite clave, clave group of people who, you know, protect the human life. And the plot thickens when certain elements are involved, um, really bad things happen, and it's a really awesome put together book series. Now I would not recommend this for anyone under 18, I'm going to say that now, uh, because it kind of gets racy in some of the plot, but hey, I mean, books are books, it's only your imagination that can go on, so that is the end of the book vlog, I hope you enjoyed yourself, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next, bye bye!